Hello everyone and welcome back to Time Travel Comics and we have another lunch in comics outing. So I'm joined by the captain again, Captain String Life, it's always a pleasure. And we're here at Mr. Beef's in Chicago. Mr. Beef has a hamburger, great pizza, Italian beef, what it's named for, and uh, great food and it's just a great time to enjoy some comics. I want to start off with this first issue. It's an Archie comic and it pays a little homage to the diner scene, particularly the soda fountain scene. And uh, behold, we have Archie and Veronica. Veronica locking eyes uh, with Archie. And just take a look at all that detail with the uh, iron rod chair, the straw dispenser, the milkshake, even right here, the soda fountain. Uh, right in the back from here. So it's just a beautiful cover as we kick off another lunch in comics. Just wanted to show you that beauty. This is Archie number 91 from March, April, because that's the time we're in now, but from 1958. So this is something I picked up recently. Black Magic. Press with publications that was uh, started by Jack Kirby, Joe Simon. We just had to look this up because I uh, couldn't remember if it was uh, it was one of those deals with Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, but it is. You know, Press with publications, uh, a prize comic book, and on the cover it's got a. A stamp. I don't know if you can see that there. But like a library stamp or a unit. It says Prop Property of the University of Colorado, Patience Library. So they're Patience Library from a hospital, then maybe. Yeah, it must, must have been some kind of a medical center at the University of Colorado. And, uh, I just looked look this up. This is uh, Dick Ayers artwork. It also has uh, Angelo Torres who worked at uh, EC. So, uh, it's got a pretty good price on it. Um, let me look at some of the ads real quick. Take a look at this. Oh wow, yeah. Time bomb. That's, that's what I need. Just what I need, a time bomb. So this is from 1960, and it's volume 7, number 4, but it's actually number 43. And that was an early attempt by uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon to do uh, horror books from the horror genre, so that's uh, pretty interesting. Because we're, they're known for their heroes and mostly the action titles, too. So we got the uh, Star Western from 1957, uh, October, November 1957. That's what Overstreet says I, in 1957, it, but at the same time they're saying that uh, showcase number four with the flag is the first Silver Age comic book. So there's a, he has a, he has a variety of opinions on when the Silver Age started. So it's kind of controversial. How could this be the first Silver Age history in 1957? When this title appeared throughout 56 and 1957, and then at the same time say that showcase number four was the first Silver Age issue in 1956. Kind of a kind of a cuddle fuddle right there. I'd like to show you uh, some books a little bit into the future by an artist that I admire, uh, Michael Kaluda. And I recently posted a video of a comic book from 1977, 78, and 79. And Michael Kaluda was an illustrator before he uh, got into comic books, particularly working with DC and uh, Marvel. But uh, I have here Time Warp, and these are the uh, dollar comics that were released. A great budget buy with eight stories in one. And we're greeted by a Michael Kaluda cover. 
You can see the action, the uh, alien in the top here, the heroes kind of thwarting the evil. And Michael Kaluta lived in Chelsea, New York, with three other artists as well, uh, creating artwork. And he noticed for working with Shadow Number no. One, the interior artwork, which is a beautiful spread of illustration, which kind of contrasted to the comic book art uh, that was used to. So just wanted to show you a few covers of Time Warp. This was when DC was taking artwork and comics from um, books that were not published and publishing them in these kind of uh, compendiums. You can see there the insect-like creature grabbing the uh, astronaut lady. And just a lot of detail, a lot of line work, a lot of proportions here with the rocket and satellite and you can see the space helmets. So Michael Kaluta went on to have a successful career and he actually requested to work on Time Warp and exclusively make the, co the covers of the book. So this is in the late 70s. He really started in 1973 and uh, Time Warp, great collection of stories by Steve Ditko, Tom Sutton, Rich Buckler, Dick Giordano from Charlton Comics. Uh, all debuted stories that were not published in regular circulation, but they were put together in this book. So, Time Warp, Mike Kaluta covers. Pretty neat. Here's something that uh, Leo got me as a little gift here. Just Bunny. a cup of tea, uh, really. Funny number 11. And look at the emphasis. The emphasis on her hiney right there. See that? Oh, the emphasis on her round little hiney. You have to leave it to the captain to uh, find those details. <laughs> But that's also a Harvey comic, and uh, I know the captain originally started collecting Harvey and among the Golden Books, and uh, this issue is kind of like a, an answer to Cheryl and Millie the Model, and, and her name is Bunny, and it's a square-bound issue. 1969. We'll, we'll leave that for thought and interpretation. We yeah. saw a little bit of Harvey uh, comics there, and uh, we'll finish up uh, with this last book here by Charlton Comics, and it's Ghostly Haunts, uh, Volume 4, Issue Number 24, and a Steve Ditko cover. Uh, thanks for bearing with us, as it is a little loud in here, but uh, we're doing our best, and I'll add some captions if there's any difficulty hearing, but just look at the colors, the green, the orange, the yellows, and this came out in April of 1972, so this is after Steve Ditko was with Marvel, and after uh, DC, kind of going back to more modern Charlton, and uh, just a great cover. I know the, the captain uh, always enjoys a good Steve Ditko cover, like uh, all of us do. And, and the ghost stories, and yeah, we have a kind of a theme with the horror genre that we saw with Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, and we'll wrap up with this one here with Steve Ditko, uh, again with the same genre, and great stuff. How's your collection of uh, ghostly hunts, uh, Captain? You have quite a few, or? Yeah, I do, kind of but there's a lot of holes that I'm looking to fill. Yeah, that's uh, a common... Well, that didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go with being a completionist in the hobby. And as we know, us collectors, we try to complete what we can. But just want to end with this one uh, from Mr. Beef, great Italian beef. And Chicago is home to the Italian beef. As, uh, in the Maxwell Street Market, they used to take the extra cuts of meat and put them in like a gravy and our juice and served over sandwiches with jardinera peppers and sweet peppers and makes for a fantastic sandwich. So here at Mr. Beef, we're enjoying some lunch and comics coming at you as we look at a short sampling. As always, it's a pleasure uh, coming at you from Time Travel Comics and Captain Strangelove. They should hire him to do commercials.
for a low, low price, this is free, this is fun, and uh, until next time, bye.